I went ahead and painted his uh, headdress and I didn't see any need to videotape that because it was the same uh, same process as this here and then I just glued on his horns so today I thought what we would do is uh, we're going to paint his head and uh, hopefully his uh, braids and hair and maybe See how far we get on this fan. Judy and I are heading off to uh, Utah here in a week, so I hope to be pretty far along on this. I doubt if we'll get as far as putting on the decorations, the uh, ribbons and possibly uh, ermine tails hanging down from his uh, headdress. We might be able to, but uh, possibly we won't. But as soon as he's painted, and I go over it closely and look for these little holidays, like there's one there, and you always have to look for those after you finish painting, because uh, believe me, they'll show up. It's just, just what happens when you paint, you miss spots, or else, you know, I don't know why that, that little spot caused that. But, uh, looking back here on the back. That looks pretty good. Now I'm thinking of putting a, a ribbon down the back of his head too. A lot of this I don't think I really need to show you because it's pretty simple. It's just uh, just putting a, something something simple attaching it to to the uh, to the piece, which I'll I'll show you, but I'll. Okay, so anyway, we're going to do his paint, so I'm going to put this back in one minute here to hide that glare. Okay. So, let's disassemble him here. So far, he's looking pretty good. Even on the, uh, even on the buffalo horns here, they're going to need some touch-up, too. And the little rosettes, I painted them white to get them ready for some beading I'm going to paint on there. Uh, another thing that I really don't need to show you because I showed you the process of how I got this far. So uh, it's just a matter of coming up with a design to paint on there. And you can find plenty of designs on the internet about the type of rosette beading there is on different Indian headdresses. Okay? But fortunately, I don't see any any missed spots on here other than the areas where I glued the horns on, which I'll touch that up. So it's not so shiny. But that looks pretty good so far. So anyway, let me set this stuff out of the way. I like the headdress. Okay, so, first off again, what do we do? We hose him down. We're heading to the mountains this Saturday. Maybe I shouldn't say that. But anyway, we are. It's cool up there. <laughs> It's not hot like down here on the flatland. We're flatlanders. So, okay, for skin tone. Not that one. Red iron oxide. A great color. Love this color. Squeeze a little bit of it out here. Yellow ochre. If you can find one that says yellow ochre, that's great. This is antique gold. Don't need that much of that. And being as this is a Native American, I'm going to use a little asphaltum, a real rich brown. 
to uh, make the color a little deeper. Getting low on that paint too. That's more than enough. And sounds like my guineas are at it again. So give me a big brush here. Now you want this skin tone dark, but you don't want it really dark. And again, painting it on here, I'm not really that worried about slopping over because I'm going to come back with a basically a black paint. For his braids. Here, it looks pretty nice. Hopefully, I'll I've been painting, well I have been, I have painted rather, a lot of, uh, of the Indians that I've done, I've painted their eyebrows black. Now there's always a question of whether Native Americans have facial hair. A lot of them don't, but then again a lot of them do. So. It's, you kind of have to decide if you want to do that because uh, if you don't paint facial hair onto your uh, piece, if you leave, if you leave it off of these ridges where the hair usually is, compared to if you put a eyebrow painted on there, it changes your carving considerably. So you have, you know, you, you just you just have to make a choice. Am I going to do this or I, am I going to take the chance and not do it? I haven't decided whether I'm going to do it with this fellow yet. Cowboys out in the sun all day. These guys are really out in the sun. Now you don't want them to make a look, make them look like a W.C. Fields and his red nose, but you do want to put some color on there. And there at the ridge of the cheekbone, not a lot, just enough. And you don't want him to look like some tart with red red lips. So you got to be careful with that too, which I a little too much on there. 
There, that looks good. What do you think? Looks okay? Now he's an old fella, so what happens when people are old, they get kind of bluish cast to their face, especially around their eyes and uh, cheeks, sunken cheeks. Doesn't take much. Again, that's midnight blue. Whoa, hang on there, and I dropped my bush brush right in the middle of it. Things happen. It's another thing when you get old. When you get old, you get the dropsies. That's <laughs> Judy and I both have the dropsies. Now I've got to go wash my hands. I'll be right back. Okay, back again. All right, here's here's the color I'm going to start with. Can you see it? Can you? Other than the spots on the bottom of the glass, but believe me, there's some color there. Not much, but a little bit. And as I'm going to take a little more. So I paint the upper and the lower eyelids with a little, a little bit of blue. Not much, just a little bit. A little bit, that's what Gabby always said. Just a little bit. We're going out to Utah to pick up a travel trailer. Something we should have done a long time ago. Before we got so old. Because we got a little dog and I like to take her with us when we go someplace. This way, all this stupid COVID crap. This will let us go camping, which I like to do, or we like to do. All right, I think that's a little too dark. I don't want to start off here. As I'm putting this blue on, it's also removing some of the red. So we're going to go out there, we're going to pick up that trailer, and then we're going to go camping on the way back home. All over Wyoming and down through Colorado, and it's going to be fun, fun, fun. And I don't have a T-bird. Now let's just take a look at him here. Thing. 
Now there I took off a little too much of the red right there. It's, i got to put some back up there again. Been sitting up at the house trying to find places to to camp, and because of all this COVID crap again, everybody's hitting the camp or hitting the spot high spots out there and around Yellowstone. It is really hard to find a place this time of year, September, end of September. Well, that's once we're finding, we're finding out once you get away from Yellowstone. It's not that hard to do. But anyway, we we'll have to go to Yellowstone. Okay, so well, I'm still still using this up old black, squeezing every bit of it I can out of here. Let that settled a little bit. Buying us a bean, a bean bean, teardrop trailer. It's sort of a tin on wheels. You have to look it up on the internet. They're pretty slick. And we've been looking at one for about a year, about. But then, you know, problems come up, doctor's appointments, everything. Everything happens during this COVID crap. I hate it. Well, Judy, I think this one's done. Hopefully I've got another one up here. Nope. 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 Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Looks like I'm going to have to squeeze some more out of this thing. thing. Yesterday was it? Judy called me up. She said, you've got a heavy bo box up here that the mail person just delivered. And I said, well, what is it? I didn't order anything. She said, I don't know. But it's heavy. So anyway, I went up there. Here's this... Uh, heavy box. <laughs> I had no idea what it was. So I opened it up and somebody through their kindness had sent me some uh, two inch walnut pieces about a foot square, I think. It's about a foot square. I guess in appreciation for what Judy and I do here. Now, I'm not going to say I didn't appreciate that. I did. But believe me, we don't expect that. And we've reached a stage in our life where we're not hmm? we're downsizing yeah we're downsizing that's right <laughs> don't make me laugh I'm just <laughs> goof up goof up enough anyway so whoever sent that I hope you tell me who you are so I can thank you but like I say, you're certainly, I don't charge for any of this stuff, and you're certainly not under any kind of obligation to 
us for doing these things. We enjoy doing it. I enjoy this craft. And if anything I can do in any way, well, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I'm going to screw up here yet yeah, if I keep giggling. To help people get as much enjoyment out of this as I, I do and we do. I don't know if Judy gets as much enjoyment out of it as I do because she has to sit there and hold that camera. But uh, she hasn't complained yet. Today she says, Oh crap, gotta go do that again. Do not. I might start. <laughs> I said that the day that you do, do oh. say that, <laughs> I might say, Okay, I think it's time to quit. But so far, she hasn't said that yet. <laughs> but like I say, thank you very much. I appreciate that greatly. Because I know what I'm going to do with those pieces of walnut. They're going to make my carvings look good. good. And uh, the mill that they were sent from sells basswood. Now, I've used Heineke basswood for, what, 35 years. Never had a complaint about it. Doubt if I ever do. But uh, this company was advertised that they also sell basswood. They're from, I forget where exactly, somewhere east of us, Tennessee, somewhere in there, back in there. I just might order some basswood from them just to see, see what it's like. I'll tell you another neat thing while I'm painting this. The other day, I got an email from a lady who said she was really interested in my carving of rooster that I had just finished. We made, we made a video on that. And I had to tell her, well, I'm sorry, that was already sold. But the interesting thing was, was she wanted to trade me an antique muzzleload, muzzleload, uh, double barrel shotgun that was made in Italy. And I looked up on the internet just to check to see what it was. You can find everything on the internet. Sure enough, there was a page that showed that rifle. And it was really a beauty. She asked me if uh, I would consider carving another one. Well, I'll tell you, after looking at that shotgun, I'm seriously <laughs> considering doing it. Not that I need a shotgun. So please, don't send me any shotguns. But I'm always looking for reference material. Interesting things. So I'm going to have to think about that for a while. But I thought that was neat. That never happened before. Someone wanted to trade me. I got me a Henry rifle. You know, go. I don't know if they're considered a yellow boy. A yellow boy is a rifle that, uh, it's a repeating rifle like a Winchester, which is probably what they meant by the yellow boy. But mine, mine is a yellow boy because it has a yellow metal uh, works on it. Looks good. Except for that. Right there, what is that? Looks like a chip. I knew 
that was going to be there. No, I just knew it. If you're real quick, you can get in here and erase the spot like that. There you go. Anyway, we were down over in Arkansas at a Cabela's store there, a nice Cabela's store. And they had this room where they had a lot of these antique guns. I'd love to walk. I'd, every time we're over there, I love, love to go into that store to walk back into that room and look at those rifles. Oh, just beautiful guns. And the kid salesman was there, a young kid. And he asked if I could, he could help me. And I said, oh, I was just looking at the guns in here, but boy, I sure do love these yellow boys. And he says, well, I've got a, I've got a Henry I'll sell you. It's brand new, never been fired. And I asked him how much. And he told me, and I could not believe that. The price that he quoted me was just so small considering that rifle. So I, <laughs> so we, uh, I hope the Bureau of Alcohol and Tobacco, <laughs> I guess firearms, whatever, aren't listening. We set up a meeting in the for the next weekend in the Cabela parking lot <laughs> and exchanged money for I have it up at the house. I, have, I shot it once. It's just so pretty. I'm, I'm not going to shoot that thing. I, it, I build a gun case for it. <laughs> it's just too pretty to shoot. That looks pretty good. I'm yakking here. You guys are probably getting tired of my st stories. Anyway, I found out he told me that uh, he is a professional shooter. And he wins these things all the time. These rifles. So luckily, I was the person who came along at just the right time when he wanted to get rid of a Henry repeating rifle, right carbine. Close the problem apart here. This morning we went down getting ready for our trip out to Utah. Took our two sleeping bags into town to wash them in one of the large uh, laundries. Can't remember how many grandkids have slept on those things and what happened while they were <laughs> while they were sleeping so we just thought it was time to go wash those things because we've had them for quite a few years. So we took them in there and put them in the washing machine and then we went down to this restaurant for breakfast and this restaurant had been open very long in, in Grove which is just up the road from us and the first time we went in there when they just opened there was a fellow back there making making breakfast and man he was a good cook he had biscuit his biscuits and gravy were really good. And then, but then every time we'd go back, it would be somebody else cooking back there. And the last time, before this time, we went in there, there was some young lady back there cooking. And she was a lousy cook. 
Well, I mean, she was not good at all. I'm sure there's nobody down there from that restaurant listening to my yakking here on this video so I can be truthful in what I say. So I said, well, I'm not coming back here anymore if that's, if that's what we have to get. The hash browns weren't cooked all the way, and the biscuit and gravy was not good at all. And I kind of consider myself a connoisseur on biscuits and gravy. I'm not going to say they were like my mama cooked, because she didn't make them. But I like them. So anyway, I called the asked the waitress. She was bringing over the coffee. I said, do you mind if I ask you a question? And she said, no. And I said, uh, that fella out there that's cooking, she said, yeah, he's the owner. And I said, uh, well, can you tell me when he cooks down here? And she said, well, usually on Monday, or Sundays and Mondays, because we can't get, can't get any decent help anymore, and they always want to take off on the weekends. So I said, well, if he's going to be in there every Monday, Judy and I are going to be, <laughs> going to be down here ordering breakfast. So we'll see what happens. I'll tell you later, maybe on Got to stop for a minute. Hmm? All righty, back again. <laughs> I paint finished painting that other uh, piece of hair over there. Because guess what? Judy said, "Stop!" Silently, so you wouldn't hear it. They don't need to see that stuff. You've painted enough of that. So anyway, here I am painting red iron oxide over his braid. Now I told you before that I don't braid, you know, do the little, little braid like most people think Indians do with their hair because I don't think it's necessary to be awful time consuming and also not all Indians braid their hair actually I was reading a book and it said that the Sioux maybe not all of them but a lot of them would undo their braids when they went to battle. Don't know why, but uh, that's what the book said. I like to paint red iron oxide on there first as an undercoating, you know, to make any red that I put on top of that that much richer but also red on oxide is a natural color like you know earth colors or something like that where the Native Americans probably got it from nature because they love that color love the color of red controversial if I don't braid my braids. That's good. Oops. There's some cicadas still active outside. It's getting down close to the end of summer and they're starting to fall down on the ground. You see them all over the place. My chickens love them. Guineas too. They just if I find one that's dead, I'll pick it up and throw it in the chicken chicken coop. But if they're alive, I always see if they're alive. If they're alive, I'll throw them up in the air, and there's usually one last flight left in them. And they go buzzing off. Now the 
the thing I'm looking forward to is getting out and getting out in the mountains somewhere to where I, we can see the stars. We don't see them much anymore down here like you used to. One of the best places in uh, in the United States to see the stars is out at Black Mesa State Park way out on the, the very end of the Oklahoma Panhandle. Boy, it's a long way out there to look at the stars, but there's a real nice campground out there. We camped there once. Listen to the coyotes all night long. And now that we're going to have that trailer, we're going to start having some fun going places without worrying about wearing masks. And Take a dog with us. It's going to be fun. Just about done, so you don't have to put up with any more of my stories and ramblings. For this video, anyway, maybe later on. Okay, I'm going to set this aside for a second. Actually, I'm going to take it out and put it in the sun so it dries real quick. And then I'll come back and we'll do his eyes and uh, put his helmet on and see how he looks. So we'll be back here in just a second. Okay, went out and picked this up off the fence outside. It's all nice and dry, but boy, is there holidays? Oh, here's where I picked up a little black. Fortunately, I'm going to paint over this all. But there are holidays, look at all of them, everywhere. You gotta, you know, painting's a process, and this is just, yeah, I see it. This is just part of the process. You gotta look over your pieces really well if you're painting like I am. So anyway, we'll worry about that problem. I'll take care of that. I don't think you need to see that. What we're going to do right now is paint his eyeballs. Again, I'm using a parchment. And the wood's not wet. You got your camera in the light. Well, I'll tell you, the help you, the help you can get these two just ain't what it used to be. <laughs> Gee, looks better already. Huh? 
the human eyeball isn't white. Ooh. It's parchment. So you get in trouble. And those terrorists come over the hillside. Don't fire till you see the whites of their eyes. Fire when you see the parchment of their eyes. They got the camera in the light again. This one enough. Because he's looking up. And I'll use my hair dryer to speed it up. Oh boy, I can't even see the brush tip. Gonna have to stay there. Darn. Let's see what it looks like here. We even have holidays here. It's going to take a while to go over this uh, to uh, get everything working right. But he's looking good, I think. It's just taking a little extra effort to get her going. So, I've got a spot there I'm going to get rid of, and a little bitty blemish right there that my brush brushed against. But I think he's looking pretty good. Once we varnish him, 
the colors are really going to come alive, I think. And uh, we'll see what happens. So in the next video, I think what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to paint the fan. Yeah, I'm going to touch up all the holidays on this piece. And then I'm going to glue him together. I actually might glue him together before I do that. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to paint this fan, put that on a video. And uh, we'll do the inserts for the things that's going to hang down from the headdress. But all that can take place after he's varnished and put together. What? Mm hmm? Because we only have a few days to go. What's that? See there? There's another one. They just seem to show up on their own. Boogers? Well, that was just a little chip. Got to varnish my stand. Okay, so. That's going to be the end of this video. I'm going to take a picture of this and put it on my blog when I make the blog entry, but I don't have my camera. Okay, so that's going to be it. Until then, I'll talk to you later in the next video.